Hey, what's going on music producers? In this video, we're gonna talk about how do you turn MIDI into a full arrangement? Now, I've done videos about this before. A lot of times I'll play these sort of big composite MIDI clips. Um, I have a whole library of these, I'll link them down below. But a lot of times I play them using kind of a stock piano sound because it's kind of neutral sounding. Uh, we'll take a listen to this one right here. Now this is another one fam uh, based off a of famous chord progression, sort of a one flat seven minor chord progression. Think of like uh, Beat It by Michael Jackson. A lot of rock songs use this chord progression. And this is kind of a big composite MIDI clip. It's got basically almost the full range of pitches represented in just one MIDI clip, right? A lot of music producers get their hands on these kind of MIDI assets and they don't really know what to do with them. The first thing that you really want to learn is separating those pitches and kind of seeing the different parts for what they are. So here you might have the top line melody, you can see these sort of elongated notes. Then you have the mid range, you have these shorter chords in the middle, and then you might have something like the bass line down at the bottom, right? So you can separate things by pitches. But even before you kind of try and stack the different parts in different ways, you can just take these MIDI clips and apply it to something besides a piano. So a lot of times what I like to do is apply it to a synthesizer, a polyphonic synthesizer, obviously something that can play more than one note at the same time, right? That's polyphonic. And here I have a patch using Meld in Ableton Live. It's a really cool synthesizer. Um, I recently did a preset pack for Drift, which is for Ableton Live Lite. Uh, I'll link that down below as well if you want to download that. Um, but here I'm using Meld, which is sort of an Ableton suite, kind of the latest kind of flagship synthesizer in Ableton. It's really cool. And here I'm creating a pluck patch. So a lot of times I always recommend people use, if you're just grabbing MIDI as a music producer and trying to get new sounds besides a piano, uh, grab something like a pluck or uh, a keyboard style patch with any kind of synth or, you know, DAW based synth that you have. In this case, I'm using Meld and we get sort of this kind of sound. It's going to change up the sound a lot just by throwing it through a patch like this. So you can hear it already changes the feeling of what you're hearing completely. So if you're listening to MIDI using a stock piano sound, you might not get the same impression of what you're hearing, right? It's a totally different impression when you throw it through a synth. Kind of almost gives you like a different genre feeling. But this is a good step to take because once you have a polyphonic sound, as a music producer, you can just sh go straight to another element. So you could grab drums, for instance, and that's going to drastically change the feeling of your music as well. So if we grab some drums right here, So it's pretty cool, right? Right off the bat, you have the essence of a track happening because there's so much happening in the pitch range of that one MIDI asset. And I haven't even, I haven't changed it at all. I haven't copy pasted. I haven't layered anything. That's just two elements, right? So a lot of music producers, you could start to build a track from there. But if you want to get even more powerful, you want to get even more control, you want to get even more kind of layers into your music, it's really easy to work from here. So let me show you how. Now, like I said before, you have different pitch ranges. So let's say the melody is up here, the chords are in the mid range, and the bass line is somewhere down here, right? The easiest way to do this, let's say I want to layer in my bass, I can go, go ahead and uh, hold down shift click on these piano markers right here. You can also draw a marquee, but the main secret here is I'm looking for a line of notes to always be monophonic, meaning at no point is there more than one note being played on top of each other. That's how I know I have a bass line, essentially. Now, a bass can sometimes be duophonic or polyphonic, playing more than one voice, but that's essentially what I try to do. 
And when I'm looking at the MIDI, I'm just gonna scan my eyes. If I was to add G1 to the mix here, you'll notice that right here, they're on top of each other. So I wanna avoid that. And even if it was a perfect fifth or sort of a strong interval, it might not be ideal. So I'm gonna hit Control Copy or Command Copy if you're on Mac. And now I essentially can go into a fresh MIDI clip right here, hit Control Shift M for Ableton, and then just click over here and paste. And now I've just pasted those MIDI notes that I took an excerpt from right here, right? So now I essentially have a baseline. So I can go in, just label this baseline. Now the neat thing about this is because I'm using a pluck synth patch in the original synth part up here, I can actually kind of build the next patch based off of that. A lot of a lot of you guys have seen my video on um, you know, secrets to synthesis, right? So maybe we do something with Ableton Wavetable and you learn about the different types of synthesizer sounds like a bass, you do this with the ADSR or a pad has a slow attack or a lead is has, you know, high sustain. All that stuff a lot of times revolves around the envelope, right? The ADSR, attack, decay, sustain, release. If I'm trying to just layer in more bass, I can basically drag that patch over and because it's a pluck bass sound, I don't even have to really touch the envelope. I can just build something to layer over that, you know, not even changing the envelope. So you can see down here, I don't even touch the envelope, but I can go into the oscillators and grab something that's a little more bass-esque. So you can go into something like basic shapes and go into more of a sine wave, maybe add on uh, something like a square wave, and you can start to build a patch from there. So let's do that now. So there I'm kind of using basic shapes and I'm just sort of picking where it sounds good to me. I'm also using Color Limiter, which is new to Ableton Live, uh, to sort of maximize the sound of the bass and kind of bring it bring its level up a little bit. Um, but essentially now when I mix that with the synthesizer that we used previously, the polyphonic synth, right? You can hear we have this nice presence in the lower end of the track. So it's pretty cool. And then once you have this sort of set in, like you've added a layer from the original MIDI, I could go back into the polyphonic, uh, the original polyphonic synth sound. And again, I'm just highlighting the notes that I had copied and pasted earlier. So everything up to um, stopping at G1. And I could mute these notes, and now they're not even in that original clip because they're you know performed down here in this bass synth sound. And that can clean up the lower end because now those notes are represented there. You could still have those notes in that polyphonic synth sound too, but no matter what, you probably want to go in and do some EQ and sort of clean up the bass range on that keyboard patch or that pluck synth patch so that you have room for the bass that you just created. So if I grab EQ8 and I just make it a little bit larger here, um, I have mine set up so I have a, a low cut kind of already built in there. But I can go ahead and just solo this track. And if I click on this headphone button in EQ8, I can ISO that area. So all that information down below, probably even right up to around 100, 200, we can cut out. So now when we bring the bass back in, You can hear that bass is totally unencumbered. So that kind of helps promote more clarity in the track once you start layering these elements together. But you know, again, the whole idea is you start with a MIDI clip and then you start bringing in VSTs and even picking out sections of that composite MIDI clip to build a track and put something together. and. Yeah, it's really fun. A lot of times I find if I just add a drum loop to these things, a track idea starts to form really quickly. Um, so yeah, if you guys find this video useful, hit the like button and subscribe to the YouTube channel. I love doing videos about this. I know a lot of people like to learn about how to use MIDI and sound design to their advantage. So uh, if you want to see more content like this, just let me know. 
And if you like the MIDI that you saw in this video, I have my own MIDI library. I'll link it down below if you want to check it out. Also a bunch of different presets for Ableton, Live Drift, and all that kind of fun stuff. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Have fun making music.